We're here at Hermannshof, a fantastic garden, and uh, we're talking to the director, Cassian Schmidt, and this amazing garden. Tell us about it. Tell us, uh, tell us whatever you can. <laughs> well, it's a botanical garden, but we also are a di uh, display and uh, especially a research garden. So all what we display is also very useful for private gardens, but also for public green especially you know in, in in terms of changing climate and uh, so this is very important for us to have an output beyond the borders of the gardens to have really an impact to influence people and the attitude to use plants this is very important for us well i've heard so much about this garden and it's taken me a long time to get here but i finally got here <laughs> <laughs> it's really great even if it's mid-November and it's not the best time but you see still some oh, fall gorgeous. colors and, and, and the grasses and the structures which is very important for us you know the off-season the skeletons the the um, um, uh, aesthetics of decay this is very important for for us here and and it influenced really the German uh, um, attitude to see on plants you know when I came 20 years ago the garden was cut down by 1st of November. Can you imagine that? You're you missing know, out all on all the these potential, glorious seed heads, All the right? potential we didn't have. And, and this is really uh, what we really changed. And this changed the whole uh, view of a, of a plant, that a plant has you know, five months of, of season of dried stems because we are not in the Mediterranean where everything is green over the winter or greens up in the winter. It's the opposite. And this people had to learn actually and to see and appreciate this also in a urban environment you know this is not messy to see seed heads well right uh, I mean you, 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 you know, use the word decay that is a quality you use the word decay but what you're talking about is winter structure winter and structure seed heads. of course but it's you know uh, Physically, it's it's decay, of course. You know, yes. it's it's the, the, the step to to be composed. Uh, but of course, we, 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 we leave it as long as possible. We we will add some bulbs uh, in the fall. So we had we have to cut down at some like point. The you'll Estas, cut it down. Some point, maybe in two weeks, uh, to add bulbs. We add about twelve thousand bulbs every year. Every to year. To these borders, and we have about sixty thousands over the year. You know. Uh, I think the compositions here are just, I mean, I've only been here for about half an hour and I'm really um, uh, entertained by the, the compositions about how this, at this layer, these, this is aster, right? This is all aster. This is the aster. This is the aster Planting border. with some extra I like. Well, they're not in bloom, but these are wild collected uh, dahlias. Really? From Mexico. Brian Cabot co collected them. This is Dahlia coccinea. It's yes. a beautiful, simple, you know, orange or light yellow, and it blooms all year, very tall. Of course, we have to dig it up for the winter, but it's very easy. Right. But this adds an extra, uh, you know, flair to, to these esters, even before they bloom. And it blends very well, and also these South American... Um, Salvia? Salvias I like very much. They're also not hardy, of course. Um, but well, that, there you uh, go. they add color. Now we are mid-November and uh, you have still colors. We, for, we are fortunate that we have usually no frost before mid or end November. Right. Uh, we are hardiness zone 8A here, the USDA hardiness zone, gotcha. which is quite, quite mild actually. So we have rarely uh, frost or deeper frost and rarely snow. I, rarely snow. I like how the lower asters are repeated again with the taller asters, right? I think this is how many varieties of asters would you say are in here? Well, there may be uh, 15 only. 15 this only. This is a swept of, of one variety. Yes. And what we do in uh, like in uh, late May and June, yeah. we, we uh, do this, what I think they call it Chelsea chop. You know, Chelsea to, chop? Chelsea chop to, to cut it down. Like one third so to it half. Won't, so it won't be as high. Yes, so we, we modulate it. You see? We, we modulate right. wellies and you, this is all the same variety. But, you know, if you do it lower and, and, and gotcha. taller, you can modulate it a little bit. And this is what, what, what we do usually. We do it just with a hedge trimmer, you know. You have right, to be right, right. not very careful, but you can, you know, make it way. Chelsea wavy. chop. <laughs> I hadn't heard that term before. 
Yeah, it's it's the the, the English uh, say it, you know. Yeah, yeah. So we, it's just uh, in the fresh green. You have to do it when they are still soft. You have to cut them like one third and and. So I recognize these plants. These are panicums. These are yes. native to North America. And I think there's a lot of, in America, there's a lot of plants that have to come here to become famous first, and then they come that's, back to that's America. That's true, that's true. And Why do you and, think that uh, is? Well, uh, maybe it's in the own country, you don't appreciate your own, your own native things right. so much. I Everybody don't know. Everybody wants what because they don't have. Because especially in America, you were always, you know, your, your uh, uh, you know, the, the English garden was probably the, the thing what especially on the east coast the people wanted to have you know maybe from the tradition yeah, so yeah. it's very british actually or very english and uh, so in in this garden tradition grasses or uh, you know loser plants don't didn't play a role and i think it was really um uh, wolfgang ulmer yes. and james from sweden who really brought this new style uh, of grasses and also uh, you know that perennials. Uh, perennials in the United States they reintroduced all these native like here Rudbeckia uh, uh, fulgida dimei uh, or fulgida goldsturm they're all native plants but they were all reintroduced they were not taken from the nature they were old cultural right. plants here we have this in our uh, farmers gardens for probably 200 years so they're not new plants prairie plants are not new they're North American, you know, border perennials, but the term to call them prairie plants is a new, it's a new thing, of yeah, course. Uh, right. But they are, they belong to our garden culture for at least two, cent two centuries. And Karl Förster, of course, um, he, uh, um, you know, uh, was hybridizing all North Americans, Helleniums. Well, uh, tell, tell us a little bit about Karl Förster, a famous German. Uh, plantsman, yes? Yeah, plantsman and uh, author and, and garden philosopher. Yes, and, I, have, I have a bunch uh, of his so books. He so many books and he was inventor of new directions in gardening, like his book, um, um, the, uh, 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 how is it called? Uh, or grasses and ferns for gardens. Yes, Einzug. Einzug, yeah, yeah. It's like, which so, means, which, uh, 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 it's a German word for like the arrival, the uh, debut. Arrival, uh, yeah, the arrival of grasses and ferns in gardens. So there are two genus which are, were at this time totally underestimated. Yes. And they were overseen in gardens. There were no grasses. And they were, they were called uh, ornamental grasses at this time. So yes. Now, no, nowadays, we don't talk about ornamental grasses. Right. All grasses are for us yeah. ornamental. You go in nature and, and see the potential. So we yeah. don't have this selection of, 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 of these terms. So he was very influenced to think maybe 30 years ahead. And then later, and Spargels. He was the person who brought grass and I never met Poggles. forward. Uh, Did you ever meet Poggles? Yes, yes, I knew, knew him very, very Tell well. Tell us a little bit about his character. Well, give well, us he a was little a, insight. He, he, he was a man. Because I've heard the name. Uh, you know, he, he lived always alone and he, he, was, yeah. he, he, was a very, he lived very simple. Solitary and Solitary, simple. so he was a person very solitary and he, he had a really simple life, you know. He was never a businessman, you ah. know, making money. But he had a good eye and he, he only released plants which are really proof for like 20 years. So uh, not like today, you know. Right, it's the <laughs> uh, new thing. Yeah, so it was a totally different... Not so marketing, but, but science. what he released, like Salvia Ostfriesland and uh, Rudbeckia Goldsturm and all these things, and, and they're still on the market, you know. They are still best sellers and, and this speaks for him himself and he was a very quiet man and um, uh, but but really likable uh, uh -huh. man actually and uh, and i think after his his death he was really appreciated but he pushed afterwards the, the, the use of grasses especially with miscanthus and uh, so um, the uh, miscanthus yeah because does. he took one miscanthus gracilimus into his greenhouse just one. and let it bloom. Only Gracilimus, the, the, you know, which usually doesn't bloom in, especially in northern Germany. Yeah. Was Friesland is near, near the sea, right. the North Sea. Uh, so it never bloomed there. So he put it in the greenhouse 
in a pot, let it bloom, and then you collect its seeds. So all these plants, what we know, like Kleine Fontaine and, and Gracilla, and all these uh, miscanthus are offsprings of Gracilimus, actually. So they're just seedlings and selections of Gracilimus. Can you show us some of his, uh, or, or some yes, of the... Yes, 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 of course. Let's go see. And, and I remember when I worked for Kurt Blumel, they were just new in North America 30 years ago, all these new uh, Pagels uh, hybrids. And, 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 and this made a new impact on using grasses, first in America, actually, not in Germany. Right. Uh, so the Americans were a little bit faster in, in using the, the style of, of, of uh, high amounts, of uh, high percentages of, of grasses. So, so early in my career, I went to England, at, sort of at the height of the perennial craze when uh, Rosemary Veery and Penelope Hobhouse ruled yeah. the world, right? Yeah, yeah. And I remember being uh, at Tinton Hall with, um, with uh, Penelope, and she was like, oh, John, you know, those, those grasses, those miscanthus, <laughs> they just don't do for us in England <laughs> like, like they do for you. And I was like, yeah, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah. You but but Pagels changed this because with this early blooming, like here, one of my favorite, uh, this is Graciela, you know. Yes. A, a, a early blooming Gracilimus, you know. And What's the translation of uh, Graciela? Uh, it's graceful? Gr graceful. Yeah, you see, it's very graceful. Small leafed, uh, but but also in, in fluorescence is high above the yeah separation the foliage. of foliage of this flower. This is very important, and it's not a big miscanthus. So these are uh, I planted this border in, in uh, 15 years ago, and you see they're still quite delicate and small. Is that cosmopolitan I see back no, there? No, 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 no. Okay. This is a, a transmus Morris Transmorsinensis. Transmorsinensis. Uh, I just mean the, the variegate. No, no, it's not very. It looks ah. like variegated, but it isn't. Just it's a just central a midriff. seedling. But these these seedlings came actually from Kurt Blumel. But it's not an original. It's a hybrid, sinensis and uh, transmorsinensis. Uh, sinensis, sinensis it's tranny evergreen. Cross. And and this is a nice uh, That's Pagas gorgeous. hybrid. This is Undine. I know. I've, I know of this one, but this I've, is Undine. I it's never not grew so it. much in the trade. It's a big one, but still delicate. These bows are yes. Undine, isn't it beautiful? Ah, oh, it's gorgeous. And I, I love it because it's so, so, uh, and it has a yellow fall color. And uh, now, are you doing a little bit of staking on yes, this? Yes, this year because we had to water it a little bit. There is, yeah, a, li a little bit. You know. Yeah, so you just usually you don't need it, but uh, yeah. But you it's do good. It's a little bit hidden. Kind of keeps it from flopping uh, but so much. if you, much. you know, have this heat and then yeah. supply water. Then these miscanthus grow like like crazy, and this is another one, a Ferner Osten. It's also and very that's nice. And that's the one. inflorescence is pink when it first comes yes, out. Yes. Yes. Very red, actually. Very red. Yeah, reddish pink. Yeah. And this is Undine again. Ah. Isn't it beautiful? Gorgeous. Well, it gets more than a square meter, of course, but wow. uh, these are the miscanthus I, I really love. I, I don't have them all, of course. Yeah, well, how could uh, you, right? Because they're really towering ones of yeah. three meters. How, uh, how big is the garden here, physically? It's uh, um, about um, almost six uh, um, acres. So 2.5 uh, uh, well, hectares, uh, uh, well, which is not really or... big, but uh, you know, it's, it's really packed with, with perennials, so it we have... Is. Uh, Maybe we stop here. Uh, we have about yeah. Um, let's, let's look at the lay of the land. Three thousand varieties of perennials in the garden. Wow. And about four hundred varieties of woodies. So from subshrubs to to trees. And oh. and you see in 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 the planet. This is very interesting. A famous landscape architect um, um, from from Stuttgart. It's uh, actually a, a a family of of landscape architects. Professor Lutz. Lutz. He did uh, the, the overall design. And what, what is very typical for him? He usually uses an open middle section, which was originally also a lawn. And yeah. then he has this circle around, going around. And then um, there is a transition of more border-like perennials near the garden. This is the gardener's house. Yeah. And this is the... Um, uh, the, the, the former villa or manor house of the Freudenberg family, which 
the garden or the, the, the property is owned by the Freudenberg family, which is a Still to this international day? company, a family, totally family owned ah. company with 55,000 employees worldwide. And uh, they have, a, uh, they have uh, offsprings in over 60 countries. So very powerful. Um, this is the, the Freudenberg. So this was their home, actually. And before it was also an uh, interesting garden. And then Lutz changed it to this concept of habitats. Lebensbereich. This means habitat. It's a special term. Uh, also Karl Fürst, they used already, but especially Professor Hansen provided these concept of garden habitats of perennial. There is this famous book. It's also translated to English into English. Uh, perennials and their garden habitats. And this is very influencing. This is the concept what underlies the whole garden. So we have here the more uh, border-like perennials where we have been before with the miscanthus near the house. And then there's a transition to more naturalism farther from the house. So we have here Mediterranean uh, uh, subshrub vegetation, uh, steppe vegetation. We have um, meadow vegetation from prairie, uh, Central Asian steppe, North American wet wetlands, European wetlands, and uh, mountain woodland, and then European woodland. This is a transition to more Asian woodlands, and then this transition to North American woodlands. North American woodlands, and then North American prairie, from tall grass, mid grass, to um, short grass. And this ends then and in the Mediterranean, Mediterranean area. steppe, uh, because physi uh, physiognomically these plants have some relations. And this is a, a tree peony garden, so uh, again a little bit Asian and chrysanthemums and so on. So this is the concept, this is a transition of habitats which are all connected also by color. Yeah. So these grass paths connect the, the lawn into the plantings, which is very nice. With 180,000 visitors a year, it's always a problem and to I would keep a oh, grass I was going to say, yeah. But we still have this You're luxury to, to do it, yes. There you go. Well, small but mighty. So it's a really <laughs> educational pro, um, yes. um, concept. And it's a concept this uh, reflects um, environments and habitats in nature. But it's a cultural um, enhanced version of nature, of course. You gotcha. know. Yes. Yes. It's yeah. not a copy of nature. It's just an it's, 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 interpretation. It's, it's an interpretation. It's, it's, it's kind of art. But, but for me, nature is really the best template. Uh, and, and I try to visit these different habitats or different landscape pictures in, in nature.